Hi, and welcome to this video where I'm going to teach you how to write a very simple WebSocket client that can connect to a WebSocket server and then can exchange data in real time. We're going to do that we're using JavaScript and Node.js. And this video is part of a longer series where we are experimenting with WebSocket technology to um, communicate different processes and exchange data between them. And hopefully, uh, by the end of this series, we'll get to more uh, cool visual stuff like geometry, sharing form, and those kind of things. So if you're interested in what you see today, make sure you check out the full playlist because we're going to start already. I'm going to assume that you have seen the previous videos and that you know how to create, how to install a node, how to create a project, and how to get your WebSocket server deployed and running. So I'm going to assume that you get, you are at this sense. That you're at this stage where you can open the echo server that we just wrote and you can type node server you can execute this and you can run a server on your local machine that is listening for connections and that will echo whatever message is coming inside all right so actually i have that implemented so i'm going to leave that here in the background so i'm just going to leave it right here and then i'm going to open a, another powershell so i'm going to click on here and I'm going to type PowerShell so that I can open another um, instance of PowerShell that I'm going to use to create my WebSocket client project. Okay, like we saw in the previous videos, this is going to boil down to creating a new folder, uh, initializing a Node.js application, installing dependencies, and then starting to write the code. So we've seen all of this in previous videos. So I'm going to go to my desktop, which is where I have this folder call um, w, ws for WebSockets. I can see that I only have one folder called server echo. So I'm going to create another folder with the command md, and that's going to be called client. Um, I'm going to call it client simple, for example, because it's not going to be doing much at this time. So I'm going to create that folder, and you can see that the folder just showed up here on my Windows Explorer, and it's also here, so I can now access the my client simple folder and if i type ls i can see that there is nothing inside of it so i'm going to clear my screen cls and i'm going to go here inside of client simple and as we saw in the previous video i'm going to initialize my node.js application i'm going to do that by typing npm in it and then i'm going to follow the instructions um, so the package name is going to be called client simple version that's not description the entry point i'm going to call the file client JS, and then test command, git repository, etc. blah, 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 license. Yes, everything is okay. All right. And you can see that NPM has created this package.json file, which is the descriptor of all the dependencies and everything that my project needs. Because I'm going to be using WebSockets, I'm going to also install the WebSocket library that I'm going to be using as a dependency. So if I double click here, you can see that right now my project has no dependencies. But as soon as I type npm install i and then type ws, which is the name of the package, this is going to go to some repository, fetch that package, and install it on my folder. And all of a sudden, the dependency has shown up here in package.js. So I'm going to minimize this, and you can see that all these files have shown up on my, on my project. So I think I'm ready now to start creating my client script that I'm going to use to connect to the WebSocket server that I currently have running here on my screen. So right here, right here in my back, right? And that I'm going to leave there. Um, I'm, not, I'm not going to touch it. So, all right. So as we saw before, I'm going to create a new file on this folder on client simple by typing code and then type, for example, client.js. But you could have done that some other way. I'm just going to do that so that uh, it opens Visual Studio Code right away. And then I already have that file ready. And if I save it, now it shows up here on my project. All right. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in Visual Studio, I'm going to use these two screens so that I have the code that I wrote on the left for the server. So that is what's running right now on PowerShell. And here on the right, I have the code that I will write for the client. So these are the two files that I'm going to be working on. And I'm doing this just so that we can see what similarities are between the project that I wrote for the server and the ones for the client and what differences are going to be. So 
what we want to do is we want to write a process that is going to connect to the WebSocket server and um, it's going to send some message like, hey, server, how are you doing? Something simple like that, all right? We will, uh, farther down in this playlist, playlist, we will write more complex programs in other platforms, etc., that exchange richer information. But for the time being, that is going to be enough as a proof of concept. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, in my client project, like I did in the server, I'm going to import the WebSocket library so that I can create uh, WebSocket objects. So I'm going to create a constant variable called WebSocket as well. And I'm going to use it to require the WebSocket library that I had before. Okay. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is before what I did was I created a WebSocket server. Like I constructed that. Now it's going to be different because it's going to be a client. So what I want to do is I want to create a WebSocket client that is going to connect to the server. So that is going to be slightly different. Here I named the variable WebSocket server. Now here I'm just going to call it WebSocket because literally I am creating a socket that will connect to the server. And then here I'm just going to construct the object by typing new WebSocket. And then in parentheses, I am asked for the address where this WebSocket server is living. So um, the address is going to be for this particular case. Let me create that as a variable. So I'm going to say the address of where my server is. So server address is going to be, um, for example, because right now in this example, I'm going to communicate between two processes that are living on my machine. So the server is on my machine and the client will also be on my machine. Then, um, as I said in previous videos, we're going to use the local host. We're going to use the IP, the, that special IP that is used to refer to anything that lives on the same machine, on the same computer. So I'm going to use 127.0.0.1. And you can see my previous videos if you need to and if you want to know more about why that is the case. I forgot to add the prefix. So this is going to be a WebSocket address. So WebSocket uh, colon forward forward slash. And because we are on the same machine, I also need to point to which is the port at which my that service is living. So that's going to be port 5000, which is what I have here. All right. And I believe that Literally, that is everything that I need to create a simple connection. All right. So I'm going to save this file. And I'm going to dock everything back to uh, the left here, something like this. Yes, uh, it's not great, but um, I'm going to dock the, the, that here. I'm going to see how the files that I have. Okay, I have the client file here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this client and see if it connects successfully to the server. So what I'm going to do is node client, and then I'm going to hit start. And I can see that um, a client just connected, but for some reason, the cursor went all the way to the bottom. I'm not sure what's happening there. But you can see that the, the client connected and the process is alive because we can see the cursor that is sticking. That means that things are so far uh, working. Okay. Oops. So, so I'm going to dock that here. Uh, all right. So it looks like things are working. Now, the problem is that this client is basically doing nothing. So it's very difficult to debug it if we don't know what it's doing really. So because it connects to the server, but once it connects to the server, it's not really doing anything. It's not sending information, exchanging. So what we need to do is we need to attach some behavior to this client as well. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do it in a very similar way than we did to the server. So when we wanted to attach behavior to the server, we accessed the events by using the on method. So very similarly, WebSocket clients have a lot of events that we can associate behavior to by giving them callback functions. So for example, WebSocket on and you can see that if I open my um, my um, my um, if I open single quotes, I can see a 
drop down of all the possible events that I can attach behavior to. So a very typical event to attach behavior to is the open event, because the open event is the event that gets raised once a successful connection with the server is established. And um, for example, something that we may want to do is we may want to say, well, whenever I connect to the server, I want to send a message saying, hi, server, how are you doing? So I'm going to attach here a function. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, I would like to send, whenever you're connected, I would like to send a message that says, hello, server. All right, for example. And as I do that, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to stop this process, all right? I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to initialize the process again. So I'm going to start the process again and see what behavior I get here on the server. You can see that a client just connected and the server received a message from the client that was, hello server. Am I on the way? No, I'm not on the way. Now, okay, so that, that is great. But remember that this server that we wrote was particularly good at doing this one thing that was echoing messages. So theoretically, this server should have taken that message and sent it back to the client. However, here in the client, we don't see that happening. We don't see any, anything going on. We don't get any message. And that is because when we wrote the, the client, we have attached behavior only to when the client connects to the server. We may also want to attach behavior to whenever the client receives data from the server. So that's going to be WebSocket on, and then we're going to attach whenever a message is received from the server, what can we do? So I'm going to write a function that takes a message. So this will be passed in to the callback by Node.js or whoever. And then here, what I would like to do is I would like to console log received message from the server. And that's going to be here, msg, okay? All right, are we ready for this? Let's try it out. So the server is the exact same one. I'm going to just run the client again. And you're going to see that the client, as we connected, sent the hello server message to the server. This got printed here. And then the server responded with a message saying someone said, hello server. All right. All right, great. So I can actually now check this out. So I can actually open another client here. All right. And I, let me make the font size a little larger because then it's going to be very difficult to see. All right. So I'm, I can create another client on my on my on my machine. And then here I can just say, well, can I also start a second client on my machine? And as I do that, this client sent a message here. And then that message was also broadcasted to the previous one. So now I have two clients, and I could just open as many clients as I wanted a third client. And whenever this connects sends to the server, the server bounces that message to all the other ones etc cetera, etc cetera. all right so we so this is it literally we just wrote a websocket client server with with a websocket client with what is this uh seven lines of code i'm not even sure <laughs> but that's all it takes um uh we could as a oh and we can also mix that with what we did in the previous videos which is uh, having some other kind of client, which might not be the node one, but it's still another client. So we can open this and we can say, hello from Chrome. And hopefully that you see, we get this message on all the clients because it's broadcasted to everyone. And um, if I go back to, for example, this one and restart it, I also get it here, hello server. So now everyone, every single client, no matter if it's node client, if it's a Chrome client, or if we write this with processing, with JavaScript, with Python, whatever, anyone who connects to 
this server, this WebSocket server that is running on my machine, will always get a message from whoever is sending messages to the server. So that's it. That's literally um, how simple that was. All right. So um, what what did I miss here? No, I think we're good with this. So obviously, this uh, these clients here, the ones that I wrote with Node.js, are not as cool perhaps as the one uh, with the one in Chrome because it, they don't really allow me to type things dynamically um, and to like communicate with the server. So it's not so chatty, uh, if you will. But um, but that is basically because the command line terminal. It, it's a bit trickier to implement typing and taking text and that kind of stuff. Uh, but we could do that as an example at some point farther down the line. I'm actually much more interested in now seeing how we can take this server here, the server that we have running now locally on my machine, and that only processes that are living on my machine can access. I'm much more interested in now teaching you how to take this and to put it somewhere that is living out there in the wild on the internet so that we can all from any computer connect to this server, which is what I'm going to go, which is what I'm going to do in the next videos down in this playlist. And at any rate, if you like what you saw, um, uh, please consider subscribing, liking this video. It helps us uh, send the message across. Okay, so let's move on and let's see how can we take the server and put it online and access it from whatever. It's going to be super, super fun.